My name is Drew Sullivan. I play basketball for London Lions. Okay, so Drew, what, what brings you here to Hoops Day today? Um, I've known Lance for a fair few years. I've coached his son. Um, and I know his family, I know, you know, I spoke to him, especially when Ellis was uh, ill and uh, he had leukemia and like, um, you know, obviously his uh, eldest son, uh, Reese, is part of Leicester's program, so I saw him every day, so I knew, I knew when it was, what, what they were going through, so I'm basically, I'm just here to show him my support for, for, you know, such a great, positive thing that uh, Lance put together. So, so talking about Lance, why, why is Hoops Day such a big deal right now, like in terms of what it does? Um, I think first of all is uh, the uniqueness of it. You know, obviously you've got you've got soccer anyway. You've got uh, professional players, ex professionals, and uh, and um, and uh, celebrities playing in, in a in a charity game. So, you know, I think being, doing that same thing in basketball has never been done before. And I think a lot of people have gravitated to it. I think that only shows the support that basketball has in this country. So, you know, what I mean, like. Yeah, I, I think I think it was, it was a great idea. You know, it was a, it was a stroke of genius by uh, by Lance, and you know, hopefully they'll be able to do it like year in year out, the same way they do with soccer. Age. Now, of course, Hoop Day is, is all about bringing people together, like the youth, trying to get them involved in basketball, disadvantaged and disabled kids. Now, but what, what does that mean for community sport and participation, especially in basketball? Um, I think that it continues to put basketball in a in a limelight on TV in the media. Um, sh and I think when, when you run programs like uh, Hoops Aid and then you see the backing from from communities but not just from like obviously people who play basketball because you expect that but the, the amount of celebrities that are, are back in the sport I think it's it shows like people like UK Sport that basketball is alive and well in this country. I mean, you just mentioned UK Sport, and I'm sure you're aware that they're rejigging their funding process. They're going to look more at participation and not just performance. And you know, having that money put back into basketball, not just at a grassroots level, but further down the line in Rio and Tokyo, what does that mean for the GB team? Uh, you know, it gives it, it gives it new uh, new lease of life. Uh, you know, obviously. We're not at that point where they have done that. Hopefully, um, they will they will take time and and really try and appreciate the the competitiveness uh, in regards to basketball. Uh, you know, I was just having a conversation about about that the other day, and I sent uh, uh, kids who were interviewing me that Great Britain is in the most competitive region in the world. You know, Europe is by far the most competitive than any other region. So that I think uh, people at UK Sport have to take that in consideration. It's not going to be a thing where year in year out you're just going to waltz to a European Championship or to Olympics. It's, it, you know, there's there's many many great teams that wasn't at uh, London 2012. You know, um, and and that's just to show, to show you how competitive uh, the European region is. I mean, yeah, you've, you've spoken about us being so competitive. And obviously being competitive means that we have a lot of people, uh, over 400,000 kids play basketball every week here in the UK. So that competition, why is that not translating to, to our team on the floor? What can you tell us? Why is that not happening? Um, I think I, I think I just have to disagree with you on that. Like when, uh, when we've got our, our best group of guys on the national team, we do, we do pretty well, you know. I don't think there's any question of that. Uh, you know, unfortunately for, for various reasons, we haven't had necessarily some of our some of our better players but when you talk about our better players you also talk about experience as well um, two a couple years ago uh, in um, in the euros we, we had our, our best our best finish in the euro in the euros and we missed out for going to the second round uh, you know just barely barely uh, missed getting through with a team that was quite uh, you know, inexperienced, you know, a lot of guys who are coming in for the first time or ha haven't played for very many caps for, um, for Great Britain. So you figure now they've got a lot more experience over the past couple of years. If we can get our, our more experienced guys in like Luel and Joel and so on and so forth, combined with um, some of these younger guys who are who have the opportunity to play for the past couple of years, I think the national team will be that much stronger. With that being said, there's, we've got a ton of kids in a in the USA um, in a college system and in, U and in Europe. So you no, know, I, I think I have to disagree with uh, that statement that saying that it doesn't translate. Cause I think it has, especially when you consider uh, the younger age groups. We've got under 16s who are doing extremely well. We've got the women's who are doing extremely well. You know, all age groups. So the, the national teams are, are actually doing very well. 
Now, on a final note, uh, looking further down the line and still continuing to grow basketball, what would you say to those kids that may be thinking about getting involved but aren't quite sure yet? Uh, I mean, if they are, then they're very much like how I was when I first started playing. I, I didn't just take to the sport. It wasn't a thing where I just started playing straight away. It took me a little while to, to build up the courage to start playing. And once I did, I enjoyed it. So, you know, I... I will give them the advice to just 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 try it and see if you like it. I mean, you know, it's something that.